Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today, we, today is Marshall Monday. We are doing another path of the barbarian. Uh, oh, another barbarian path today. We're doing Path of the Storm Herald. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, you are can still frozen hear. in the weirdest way. <laughs> there you go. I That's got angry. Cool. I'm sorry. Am I still frozen? <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Well, we're back. There you go. Hello. That. Hello. I hope all that makes the cut, and we have that awkward like two seconds of me restarting my OBS for probably will bashing my microphone. <laughs> because now, if I, I cut, if I cut that, then none of what you said will make any sense. That's that's true. Plus, we got the really great freeze frame of me looking really angry holding my yeah, microphone. Uh, this is a barbarian option. Path to Storm Herald, as you said. This is, I think, the coolest conceptually to me as far as, like, what I would want from a barbarian. It's like, you get so angry, you literally emit storms. Like, that's that's metal. That, like, yeah. I, I can see the album cover of, like, a heavy metal band with it's got, like, lightning and just coursing rain down on it and someone's shredding on a guitar and the bassist has just got, like, the long hair with the giant hat just, like, going to town and the drum like, oh, yeah. It's so metal. Storm. Um, and then it's but like... Still, the, the, the name has to be Sculptor of Flesh. That's true. That's the those are the singles on the album. Yeah. Uh for the or <laughs> that could be the band name too. There are a lot of we should have at some point a Elders Invocations top five band names. I think that'd be mm. a good time. Uh in any case, this is like the theme is you're you get so angry that you like bring about storms of varying natures, and they got three different versions of them. So they have desert sea and tundra storms, so sandstorms, arctic like you know, snowstorms, and then um regular rain. Just lightning storms, all that kind of stuff, right? I conceptually love that premise. The execution I'm not the highest on, but it's at least cool. I think it's novel. I think it's interesting. So you start with Storm Aura, which is one you get the thing you get at third level. And it basically says whenever you rage, you get an aura that extends 10 feet around you. Now, your aura has an effect that activates when you enter the rage, and you can activate the effect again on each of your turns as a bonus action. So whenever you bonus action rage, you get the effect, and then you can continue to do that every turn as a bonus action. You choose every time you raise Desert Sea or Tundra, your aura's effect. I'm sorry, not every time you raise. You choose Desert Sea or Tundra. The aura's effect depends on the chosen environment as you to the below. You can change the environment choice whenever you gain a level in this class, which oh. is the dumbest decision I have ever, not ever, but it's a really dumb decision. It's why, so, do, why do you think that? Because it, this this option isn't re, like remotely game breaking. This isn't close to pushing the envelope for like super duper powerful. I can't fathom why you don't get to pick every time. It's bizarre to me that you could just switch it on level up. You don't even have to like, commit oh. to it. Oh, it's all right. Just I thought you just didn't weirdest... like that you you had you could you had the option to switch at all. No, it, I think lean into it. See, every time you rage, you get to pick, or yeah. and then you have a really cool flexible toolboxy thing, or. You pick it, you lock it in, and it's a little bit better because you had to lock it in and make that choice. And then try to like go in between that and be like, well, if you don't like it, you can do this one. No, get that crap out of here. Make like bad well, designers. If, bad. if you were locked in, I, well, actually, even if you weren't, I'd like to see these be a little bit more powerful. Me too. Uh, especially if you were locked in. Yeah. So the um the auras, if they require a save, the DC equals A plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. God, I hope in the next update they just give us class save DCs, which is a premise where every single class has a class save DC and it just tells you when you take the levels in the class, this is the DC, and you just stable it to all of the classes' features. That'd be super convenient and would work great here for barbarian class save DC. Anyway, it doesn't say that it's this modifier instead, which is eight proficiency bonus con mod. Now, the actual fun meat of this text, deserts every area, which is get 10 foot radius around you. When the effect is activated, all the creatures take Two fire damage. <laughs> At third level, that's not bad for just a bonus action every turn. At 11th level, that's kind of dookie. But fortunately, it does get better. The damage increases at certain levels. It increases to 3 at 5th level, 4 at 10th level, and 5 at 15th level, 6 at 20th level. Now, 1 is not a meaningful upgrade, unfortunately. <laughs> like... Like, D6s don't even end up scaling that well in terms of, like, hit points versus health of creatures. And, like, yeah, this is something you can do every round, but, like, a 20th level, like, I do 6 damage. <laughs> gotcha! It doesn't to feel every right. creature within 10 feet of me. 10 feet of you. And it costs my bonus action. Bonus action cost I actually kind of like because it sets this option to say like you want to be doing this as your bonus action. You can use your action to hit stuff. You can actually do other things. You can always just light things around you on fire. This 
definitely takes you away from the polar master stuff. You want to be in a build that isn't leaning on a bonus action in another way, which is a kind of interesting design space to explore. They just didn't really give it enough juice, I don't think, with Desert. Well, that's just it. I mean, all right, so I, I could either live with give it more juice or don't make it a bonus action, just make it an aura that's on. If you're yeah, I would love to see at the them. start of your turn, everything takes two damage around you, right? That feels like it yeah. could have been that, but it isn't. And that's what an aura is supposed to be. Yeah, I kind of agree. Anyway, C is the next one. Uh, whenever this effect is activated, you can choose one of the creature. One. Why one? The target makes a deck save, on takes a d6 lightning damage, and a fail to your half emotional success, and then the damage increases similarly to the one above at the given levels by 1d6. So it goes 2d6 to 10, 3d6 to 15, 4d6 to 20, which does scale better technically, but it only hits one thing as opposed to more things. So this is like better selectively if you're going against one larger entity that you just like it kind scale. of get sneak attack. It scales better, right? but uh, at, at third level, it, it's about the same, I would think, huh? Uh, it is an average of a di- a 1.5 damage more to one thing. So yeah. if you hit two things, the base damage is better. If you hit one thing, the D6 is probably better. Um, in either case, I am unimpressed, but like, sure, damage is fine. I think if you're going to have auras based on storms, the first place I go is some kind of condition, some kind of like slow or obscurity. I would love to see like, you know there'd be some kind of, like, you know, buffeting sands, blind things, or, you know, they're anything cooler than just two damage. But, you know, anyway, we got a lot more to go through, and that's Tundra. So Tundra, I think, is actually the most interesting effect, even if it's the worst. So whenever the effect is activated, each creature gains two temp HP in the area that you choose, as an icy spirits and you to its suffering, which is... It should be the feature for the spirit guardian one, the Path of the Ancestral guardian. That This should be that feature, the one where you, you used your your, to bolster yourself and allies right. and your ancestral spirits. Instead, now the icy storm is invigorating you. What's happening here? Uh, I don't love any of these. The icy spirits are spirits innately icy. Is that a thing? I don't know. I well, think it's the dumb. icy spirits are. Is that like a classic you're... fantasy trope? Is icy spirits? Well, you're in. The, you're in the. You're. It's a tundra effect. Yeah, I'm aware no, that it's I'm a tundra saying... effect. I'm wondering I'm, where is this fantasy? Why is it coming out of left field? All spirits are icy. I'm saying this is a tundra effect, so these particular spirits are icy. Sure, I would say if I'm going to design a feature that's in a, it, that is embodying what an Arctic storm looks like, I don't start here, right? <laughs> this is not. I don't reach for icy spirits at the base level of what a frosty storm should be doing, which. I think it points to me that this is a deeply misguided option that doesn't quite nail any element of its performance. I think all of these effects are kind of interesting, but way undershot power-wise. I think all of these effects don't do a good enough job selling the fantasy they're trying to sell, and this is all you get at third level. This end up feeling just like, I don't have a storm around me, I'm just really hot. Or I don't have, you know, like, I have, I don't have like this arctic tundra wrath around me as I rage. I have a kindly little blue spirit friend that is, is giving a bunch of people HP. And that is so far removed from the fantasy that I want this option to be doing. Desert's kind of the closest, I think. Sees like a little bolt of lightning fling off you, which is kind of neat. But like, these need to be juiced up a lot or like do other effects beyond raw damage for me to get particularly excited about this out of the game. And again, yeah, we, it's all we, you get. And it's we get only some conditions down the, down the line, but yeah, so far I'm not impressed. Yeah, I don't love it. It's still like... It, this is by far better than some of the other options we've talked oh, about. Oh, absolutely. But this I is mean, like that's a low bar. That's true. This is something at least new and interesting that you can kind of do. Now you kind of have a barbarian that wants to like get paid off for just sitting inside a million tiny little twig blights and just like burning them all to death. I'd love conceptually and... this barbarian just diving into a pile of really angry rats just to see who dies first. That's very fun to me, but most importantly, you don't get cripping cripplingly penalized for using your feature. We just talked about Path of the Berserk, everybody. And that one is, in fact, a lot worse than everything else in the game, more or less. Uh, next, so sixth level, we get Storm Soul. So this is another one where you get Desert Sea Tundra. Sixth level, the Storm Aura grants you uh, benefits when it's not active. The benefits are based on the environment you chose, which, again, you can switch on level up. So if you're like, I want to des- desert out the gate because it just does flat damage and I don't have to really think about it and just does everything around me. Cool, nifty, neat. If you wanted to be like, oh, but I want C, you can switch when you get to level six and then you get the C effect, but then you have to use the C aura. It's dumb. It's 
it's fine. Anyway, Desert is you gain resistance to fire damage and don't suffer effects of extreme heat, as described in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Moreover, as an action, you can touch a flammable object that isn't being mortar carried to light it on fire. That's cute! That's fun. I like that yeah. a lot. Do you have any strong feelings about it? I'm not about that in particular. I, I was going to say, like, alright. Going back to the beginning of Storm Soul. Sixth yeah. level, the storm grants you benefits even when your aura isn't active. So then it becomes an aura effect. You know, I don't. Like, not really. Because like, the aura is like a 10 foot thing happening around right, you. Yeah. And this is just like a but, passive but, innate uh, thing. Right? The aura effect should be passive, is what I'm saying. Oh, 100%. An aura. 100% right. agree with that. So, like, when it's not active, you still get these effects, which makes it more aura like to me. Yeah. There's def yeah, there's a lot of Yeah, you're right. You're right that it is definitely more of passive effects feel like they should be attached to auras, but these are passive effects that aren't part of the aura yeah, that you have to right. spend actions using. But anyway, see these are next. I mean these are cool. Uh yeah, all right. You touch things, set them on fire. That's fun. Yeah. You could uh You're a, a walking just... tinderbox, and that's not super valuable, but yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, uh, I have I place no value on suffering effects of extreme heat, none whatsoever. I have played no. in desert settings. I have run desert settings, and I have never once been like, I really care to run these rules. Maybe you're at that, like, five of tables that care about running those kinds of games. And if so, okay, you got something that helps you. Otherwise, you could just wear appropriate clothing, and that, I believe, mitigates almost all of these problems. Uh, anyway, C is you gain resistance to lightning damage, and you breathe underwater. You can also gain a 30-foot swim speed. Sure, if you're doing aquatic stuff, why not? And then Tundra is you gain resistance to cold damage. You don't suffer the effects of extreme cold, as described in the DMG. Moreover, as an action, you can touch water and turn a five-foot cube of it into ice, which melts after an action. The action right, fails if the creature's in the cube. You can do that over and over again, yes? This is the coolest ability the option gets, yeah. think, right? So I'm I'm looking at you just walk across a river and make a bridge as you go. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Now, are you going to be? You might be a little bit um, disappointed to hear that the cantrip shape water does that exact thing, <laughs> where you touch a five foot cube of water and it becomes ice, and that lasts an hour. And I'm okay. like, oh, all right. It's, well, it's, yeah. it's still something. It's still novel. Well, barbarians don't get cantrips. That's a great point. So we have to accept a sixth level feature that gives us a fifth <laughs> of a cosmetic cantrip and resistance to cold damage. Uh, yeah. This probably could have been a lot better than it is, huh? I don't rate yeah. resistance to any of these damage types that highly. I don't want... I, I'm not taking the subclass for any of those reasons. These all, to me, feel like flavorful enhancements I would get alongside a real feature. But that's it. This is all you get. Like, igniting things is a cosmetic cantrip that I would recommend players take when they have a cantrip they don't really care about. And that's the level of effect we're talking about that we're giving barbarians here. And yeah, Tundra, I love the idea of you make a five cube of ice, you lift it up, you stack them around like blocks, you climb all over them, you can do cool stuff with frozen water. It's a nifty little ability. It's still niche. It's still like you need big five foot spaces of water to start making use of it. Yeah. But like, it's, it's nifty at least. It's just not a really impactful out of combat utility thing. It technically counts and it's better than nothing. So like it gets a D and not an F in the category, but like, come on, this deserved to be a lot better than it is, right? Yeah. Uh, Shielding Storm is the 10th level feature. You learn your mastery of the storm to protect others. Uh, learn to use your mastery of the storm to protect others, sorry. Each creature of your choice that has the damage resistance you gained from the storm soul feature while the creature's in your storm aura. Like if your campaign is entirely in the plane of fire or something, maybe. Well, okay. If your entire campaign's in the plane of fire, how valuable is the aura that deals four fire damage? Well, you wouldn't take that one. That's the only way to get fire resistance. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, because you have to... All of these are interconnected. If you want fire resistance, you have to have the desert storm. All oh, right, right. If you want... Lightning resistance. I was thinking it was the I was seat. thinking it was the opposite, but no, that that would have made more sense. Yeah. So like even in the campaigns targeting these environments, I'm still like, oh, oh, and that's yeah. it. that's the entire ten level feature. It's a non feature. But, it's usable uh, like once. Still, if I don't know if if you were in that campaign, giving your entire party resistance might be something, but then that's. That uh, 10th level feature is why you're taking this entire subclass. 
Yeah. And you're getting close to nothing up to that point. Yeah. And like, again, we can talk about, I, I, I gave some gripe about like, why is, why is it once per level is when you get to switch? If you could just willy nilly switch, this is, this would kind of be a flexible resistance to elemental damage types to kind of set you up as like this anti, like the, you, you pull from the wraths of different storms and like coat your allies in resistance to storm damage, which would yeah. be the heat from sandstorms, the cold from, you know, tundra storms, lightning storms or lightning resistance. You get one of them and you don't get to interchangeably pick them out or swap them out in any meaningful way. And none of these are so powerful that that would be a, a amazingly powerful. And this feature is utterly trash whenever you only get one of the three. Like, if you're in a random campaign going against average monsters, there's no way you're going to regularly know which one you need. Yeah. And that's going to make this close to unusable. Like, you might just say, well, I guess I'll take... You'll pick based off of the third level aura that you got and have been using since the game started, and then you'll get, like, a mediocre benefit from occasionally someone... Like, you go into, like, stumble into a... I guess you'll know going into a fighting a red dragon. Oh, hey... I'll take the aura that gives us resistance to fire damage, but then your entire character is just resistance to fire damage, and that's not a great place for a barbarian subclass to be. No, not at 10th level. Not at 10th level. Oh, we end on a raging storm, which better be good. At 14th level, <laughs> the power of the storm you channel grows mightier, smashing <laughs> out at your foes. The effect is based on the environment you chose from the storm aura. So again, you get one of these per level. Um, one choice that lasts the entirety of the level. So desert, immediately after a creature in the aura hits you with an attack, you use your reaction to force it to make a deck save. On a failed save, it takes fire damage equal to half your barbarian level. Sure. I don't... That's We're talking seven fire damage? Yeah. Every round! Plus the yeah. aura damage, so it's kind of like 13 fire damage around. That's kind of like an extra attack. That's honest to god. It doesn't read great, but does play pretty well, I think. Um, especially in the context of it all. I have different beef, which I'll get to in a second. C, whenever you hit a creature within the aura of the attack, you can use your reaction to force that creature to make a strength save. On a failed save, it's knocked prone, as if struck by a wave. Hey! Hey! Hey, look! It's a feature that, like, tries to embody what the storm is trying to do. That's so exciting. I'm really glad that at 14th level, I finally get a feature that, like, hey, you wanted to do something that involved a, a big, raging sea storm, now you got it. You can throw waves at people to knock them prone. Just took 13 uh, levels one, together. But yeah. One person at a time, though. Like, and that's all. There's no damage attached. It's like there aren't there are there cantrips that knock people prone? Or I know there's first level There's spell. there's stinging uh the stinging sap knocks creatures prone, that's true. So I will give this credit. Um it using your reaction is a huge bummer, but as a character making multiple attacks, you can be in a situation, right, where you you've got the sea storm going on, you're lightning blasting one thing, and this is kind of like the duelist archetype that this subclass presents. You hit something, you knock it prone, you have advantage on attacking it, well it's cute right eh? Eh? but then yeah. you remember that you've had reckless attack and just always have advantage on all of your attack rolls whenever you care about it so this is really kind of only setting up your allies and I, I don't know how much i care about that it still consumes your reaction in a kind of meaningful way maybe you'll get some utility out of it but it's not the best thing in the world could it have been third level absolutely could have been a third level and then we got Tundra. Whenever the effect of your Storm War is activated, you can choose one creature you can see in the aura. That creature makes a strength save where its speed is reduced to zero. Which, while thematically fitting, does not matter at all. <laughs> because it was gonna hit you anyway. And now it's just gonna keep hitting you anyway. So, great. Oh, yeah. Th you know, I, I agree with what you said. This should have been the third level, and it should have progressed from here. All I think you could staple the damage option third level gave and Raging Storm to the third level feature and be like, oh, okay, that's like an actual cool little aura thing that you get. That's exciting. It's a reason to have your bonus action using kind of powerful. You get some neat flexibility. Maybe you could even attach like uses to these. Like, oh, you can use the knock things prone three or four times along rest or something. Get some meaningful decisions. No, this is a 14 level capstone. Well, I mean, no, thank you. But you mm -hmm. have to use this again and again, right? Yeah, you can use these indefinitely. Yeah. I don't care at this point to use these indefinitely not, really not a 14th level but i mean no. third level yeah i, I think right. the desert is definitely the best desert is like a good chunk of extra damage as a reaction that you can consistently get round after round and it rewards you for being hit again it kind of plays into like this each of these auras have sort of a different lane so the desert aura wants you to be surrounded by things the sea aura wants you to be a duelist that locks down one target and the tundra aura wants you to be a guardian and all kind of have abilities that give you that play pattern. 
I would love if you could switch between those play patterns, like a stance where you have like, I go into Tundra or do defensive things. I go into Desert or to do damage or to all things around me. You can kind of selectively pick for the different environments. That could be really cool, right? You get one. You pick one and you're locked into it for the entire level and all you have is, I. Uh, if I'm against one thing, Desert Aura blows. Oh well. If I'm against one, uh, 500,000 things, Sea Aura is pretty pointless. It is one or 46 to one of the 12 gremlins climbing all over me. Great. That's... <laughs> Not even remotely useful. I would much rather have desert here. It's still oh, not man. awful, but I don't know. It's uh, that's uh, for a capstone feature. That... I'm not. I'm, I'm in the awful camp. I think desert. Uh, it's, Imagine... it's not berserker awful. No, it's not. It's it's just like an average barbarian class awful. <laughs> yeah, but man, I barbarian, genuinely they really gave him the shaft. Yeah, They're I genuinely already not amazing. I think you could if I had didn't know this was a real option. You could have told me I found this on Reddit. Is it balanced? And I'd be like, this is way under the mark. Someone's homebrew is not up to snuff. This is like their first time designing. They want to do a cool thing. They didn't want to overshoot. I get it, but this is kind of trash. They printed this. They asked you money for this. They are supposed to be the best designers in the industry, and um, and this isn't the worst. This isn't the worst option that they've asked money for. Uh. Yeah, barbarians have a tough time, and this doesn't address any of their problems that meaningfully. I like the. I think if you took this idea and just pushed it like eighty percent more, you don't need to double what it's doing, but give it like a good bit more juice. I think we can have some cool conversations here. You really need a real 10th level feature. This basically lacks a 10th level feature in the vast majority of encounters. That's a gargantuan problem for a class that all it does is rage and hit stuff. So, like, you know, that's where we'd have to I, start. I feel like the 10th level feature is one of the stronger ones. It, I mean, it, when it when it matters. Yeah, and it matters in 1 in 10 encounters per campaign. Yeah, maybe, probably. So 90% of the time it does literally but, nothing just like a flat nothing like the thing in this fight doesn't do cold damage well guess we're all shit out of luck sorry guys i have a 10th level feature that's actively dead for the entirety of this dungeon that that's a horrible place to be you never want to be there no it's i like conceptually everything it's doing i think if you are at a casual table and are just looking to live this specific fantasy you'll be let down a bit in how it delivers on that fantasy but it will look the way you want at least i am baffled the desert doesn't include a blind it is yeah. the most puzzling decision i think i've ever well, like tundra could have done that as well it's it no seems storm. it seems like a really easy lane to go in right like it seems like that would just it makes sense. It's a way that you could take advantage of the Barbarian being a melee ranged combatant to get some extra defensive options, get some extra offensive options. That seems like, just like, that's like right over the plate, easy home run. Like, that's just a perfectly reasonable feature to put here. I, Stroll Soul desperately wants to do more than just get a swim speaks. The vast majority of what I take away from Storm Soul is you can function in pirate campaigns, that's which is fine. Like, all right. Here's what when I saw the sea for Storm Soul. I was like, "Whoa! You can breathe underwater. You also gain a swimming speed of thirty feet." Why? Why am I excited about that? <laughs> because the rest of this sucks so hard. <laughs> the rest of the options are done by cantrips, uh, fractions of cantrips. Uh, yeah. I think there's a giant disconnect in design premise whenever it comes to making good options for barbarians. I think this is like a, a really clear example of everything on display as to what's going wrong with barbarian. Even when they do make options for barbarian that is supposed to have some utility, like we asked them, like I, I asked them to do, the utility is Storm Soul. And that's like, oh good. I can match a fifth of that wizard's first, one of the wizard's three first level abilities. Excellent. That ain't it. There needs to be a lot more powerful, a lot bigger, splashier, more consistent, or even like inconsistent, like a once per long rest powerful ability that matches the fifth level spell slot is what I would kind of expect if I'm getting one of it. If I'm getting it as a 10th level feature, it needs to be good, and these aren't. Uh, yeah. Not unusable by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely not something I'm ever excited to do. If I'm, no. if I'm going into a campaign and I'm trying to like embody a character archetype while deliberately playing a lower power character, I'd probably reach for an option like this, because I like the flavor enough, 
but I know it's not going to be particularly powerful. I think that lands it comfortably in the D category. I think this is a option most players will not want anything to do with. If you want your barbarian at all to be close to optimized, the bonus action costs here are not going to make up for what you're missing off of things like Polar Master. You're going to have definitely better subclasses to take than this. Um, it's still not the worst, but it's definitely, and like it'll function, it just won't function well. All right, I'm going, all right, yeah, I'll agree with D, but I'm, I'm going to try to save D minuses for something truly horrible. So that I'm, I'm going to go with as low a D as you can get without being a D minus. Sure. Let's, oh. At least it's not an abject failure because it functions, unlike Berserk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how disappointing. It sounds oh, so cool, right? Yeah. Elite champions who train alongside druids and rangers. Yeah. Likely story. All right. Well, that was Path of the Storm, Harold. Keep walking. Um, all right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think of Storm Herald Barbarians down in the comments. And, uh, yeah, let us know what you think of our opinions as well. Like and subscribe, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.